not everybody can go home with a good feeling. Not everybody goes home with a good feeling. And every time I come to this church, in spite of all of our flaws, we are all flawed because we're human. But the love, the love just doesn't change. And that's the one thing I can say every time anybody ever asks me about now. They love people. They love people. Or at least me. <laughs> My people. I don't know. We are, that's our testimony. Y'all love us. We're grateful. We're here in the absence of the shepherd of this house, Dr. Broadnax. I thank him for trusting Miss uh, Reverend Allen over here and myself with his flock. And God's got a word, amen? Amen. I'm gonna keep on pressing towards the mark of the prize of the high calling, for the high calling, of the high calling. The high calling. <laughs> so the scripture's already been read. From the book of Luke, the 17th chapter, verses 11 through 19, are the scriptures that we are going to focus on. I just want to read again verse 14 and verse 14, 15, and 16. And I'm reading from the Common English Bible. When Jesus saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. As they left, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw that he had been healed, returned and praised God with a loud voice. Amen. He fell on his face at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Let us pray. Oh, blessed and holy Father, I thank you, God for yet another opportunity to come and be your voice, God, for the people. <coughs> My Lord, use all that is within me that is good for you right now, God. Let them hear you through my voice and let them see you through my eyes. I thank you. In the blessed name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, and the church said, Amen. Amen. He returned and praised God with a loud voice. He fell on his face at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Preparing for this sermon, I remembered an interesting and familiar anecdote about a man who was lost in the woods. Later in describing the experience to his family and friends, he had told how frightened he was and how at last in an extremely desperate effort, he finally knelt down and prayed. Someone asked him, did God answer your prayer? Oh no, the man said, before God had a chance to, a God came along and showed me the way. Like that man, many of us are blind to the many blessings that God showers upon us daily. Every day that we are allowed to open our eyes and to rise to see the sun shining or the rain falling, we should give thanks to God. Amen. Amen. We hear the birds chirping and see beautiful and colorful flowers and trees, but we rarely give it a moment's thought to the wonderful creations of this world. Jesus. And all that we have access to, and that he's given us the five senses to enjoy them as well. We grumble about having to eat the same old cereal, forgetting that many would gladly exchange places with us to just have anything to eat. We complain about our jobs. Half of us, or more than half of us, probably prayed for the job, 
that now we complain about the job, forgetting that many would be grateful just to have a job or even to have the bodily strength to work. We complain about our lack of money, forgetting that a lot of us spend more on entertainment each month than many around the world earn as their total income for the year. Luke shows us in this portion of his book that there is such a fine line between gratefulness and ungratefulness. But what I know for sure is that God has blessed us far more than we realize and far more than any of us deserve. And that is extremely important, and that is why it is extremely important to understand how to respond to God's abundant blessings. Amen. Because the improper response is to be oblivious to the fact that God is blessing us, or even worse, to take credit for his blessings as if we earn them by our own efforts. That is blatantly disrespectful to the Lord. Our only proper response is to glorify him from a thankful heart. Now, these two responses, proper and improper, are illustrated for us in the story of Jesus cleansing the ten lepers. The title of this sermon is The Neglectful Nine and the Thankful One. Only one of the ten responded properly. Luke teaches us that we should respond to God's blessings by glorifying him at the feet of the only begotten son from a thankful heart. Luke again picks up the journey of Jesus proceeding toward Jerusalem where he will meet his appointed destiny. He is traveling somewhere along the border between Samaria and Galilee, where he enters a village and encounters the ten leprous men. According to the law, they kept their distance, but they recognized Jesus and cried out to him for mercy. Rather than drawing near and touching them, as he did with the leper in Luke chapter 5, 13, Jesus simply instructs them, to go and show themselves to the priests. Now there will be no point in such action unless they were cleansed of their leprosy. And yet at this point, they were not cleansed. They had to act with obedient faith. As they walked on, they were cleansed. But only one of the ten turned back to glorify God and give thanks to Jesus for his great mercy and power. The strong implication is that the other nine were Jews. Mm -hmm. Luke seems to put this here to show the increasing rejection of Jesus by the Israel nation. Whereas this foreigner receives not only healing, but also salvation showing us that the way of salvation is open to all who call upon the Lord, but that many who have received wonderful gifts and benefits from him are in danger of missing what they most need, and that is salvation for their souls. We should all see ourselves as lepers. We are unclean before God and of man, truly. Let's review some things from this, uh, from the, I'm sorry, from the lesson in Luke in chapter 5, verses 12 through 16, concerning leprosy. In the Bible, leprosy is a dreaded disease. That is, that is the reflection and the picture of sin to those in that day. This is alluded to in our text by the fact that the lepers are cleansed. Leprosy makes a man ceremonially defiled so that if he was healed, he still had to go to the priests 
and carry out an expensive ritual of cleansing before he can be accepted back into the religious community and worship. Lepers were treated as if they were, in effect, dead men. The Mosaic law said that the person be cut off from the society, including his family, for they were to be alone, or to find others like them, and then they would have someone to be with. They had to wear torn clothing, had their head covered, covered their mouths, and had to shout, I'm clean, I'm clean, wherever they went to warn others to keep their distance. So Jesus encounters 10 such wretched men who had bonded together. Now if the nine were Jews, their common tragedy had broken down the traditional separation between the Jews and the half-breed Samaritan. They were, Samaritans were considered Gentiles. But they were all outcasts, separated from the common worship and separated from their own people, seemingly under God's curse. Now here's the kicker. The Bible wants us all to see ourselves in our natural state before Christ as spiritual lepers in his sight. Mm -hmm. God wants us all to see that our hearts are deceitful and desperately sick. We are sick with sin and unclean before the Holy God. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, just as this awful disease of leprosy separated the lepers from the community, likewise, sin causes distance and it ruptures human relationships as well, mm -hmm. especially often among family members. Just as only God could heal the dreaded disease in the same way, only God can heal and cleanse the human heart from the awful disease of sin. When we allow pride to stand in the way of us, acknowledging our true condition as spiritual lepers, and it is one of the main reasons people around us that are watching us do not receive God's salvation in Jesus Christ. Always remember that someone somewhere is watching you. Amen. Amen. And your actions may be the cause for someone to come closer to Christ or to walk farther away. Mm -hmm. We are all prone to say, I may have my faults, but I'm only human and I'm not a terrible sinner. I'm basically a good person. That's what the Pharisees said about themselves. And they missed God's Savior. And really, who needs a Savior if you're basically good? Mm -hmm. All right. That's what the lukewarm church. All right. <laughs> hey, yes, ma'am. At Laodicea, thought about themselves. We are rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing. That's from Revelations. Chapter 3, verse 17. So to think that you are basically okay in God's sight is a sure fire way to receive nothing from him. If these lepers had thought, we may be sick, but we're not that bad, they would not have cried out to Jesus for mercy. They knew that they were going to die unless God and his power had mercy on them. There are two things that need to be done to receive God's blessings. One is to acknowledge your desperate, flawed condition before him. The sense of need leads to the second step. We need God. We need Jesus. 
none of us are that good or that okay. Because all it takes, you can be okay right now, walk out that door, something happened, and it ain't okay no more. That's right. Amen. So it's better to be prepared Amen. than to have to find preparation in an emergency. Yes, yes. Great. Amen. So, first thing is to acknowledge our desperate condition. And then, secondly, we should all do as the lepers did and call out to Jesus for mercy. <coughs> pride, pride, pride. Mm -hmm. So, among other things, leprosy attacks the vocal cords so that these men probably could only make a raspy sound. They also lost fingers and limbs. Things would just fall off. Really nasty disease. But even them just being able to make a raspy sound, that did not stop them from raising their voice and crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And the gracious Lord Jesus did not turn a deaf ear to their cry. These men knew Jesus by name, but they also called him Master. That is acknowledging his authority. Luke is the only gospel to use the word in addressing Jesus, Master, and every other time it is used um, by the disciples. In uttering this cry, these lepers take their proper place under the Lord Jesus' sovereign authority. We must put him in his proper place as Lord and Master when we come to him. He has promised to be our brother and our sister and our mother and our father and our good cousin. But before all of that, he is our Lord. Yes, yes, yes. man. He is our Lord. Mercy, like grace, is God's undeserved favor. Grace, and I want y'all to listen to this, grace is getting what we do not deserve. Mercy is not getting what we do deserve. I'm going to say it again. Mercy like grace is God's undeserved favor. Grace is getting what we do deserve, do not deserve, and mercy is getting is not getting what we do deserve. Let me say it again. Grace is getting what we do not deserve. You do something that is a sin against God. Grace keeps you from the punishment that you should receive. Mercy is not getting what we do deserve. Mercy is keeping you from the punishment as well. Both are gifts. Both are gifts. And they both are what God asks of us to do to one another as well. Extending grace. To one another, extending your hand to pull somebody up who has fallen is something that God wishes we would do more often. Because we, what we tend to do is we don't do those things and we just say, oh, God will take care of me. <laughs> but what if God is using you to be his hands? his mouthpiece, Amen. his feet. So don't be so sure to throw away a job that you feel on your heart that you, you can speak about it, but you don't want to do it. it. Takes you out of your comfort zone. Makes you have to speak to somebody that you may not want to speak to. Make sure you go out of your way five or ten minutes 
to give somebody a ride who you see walking or at the bus stop, not realizing that it is only God that you are driving the car that you have. Amen. With heat and air conditioning and whatever else. And there's somebody standing in the elements that you, God knows, you can't get from the building to your car fast enough. Sometimes I forget a jacket, and my mother and my husband both are like, you need a jacket? I'm like, for what? I'm going from the house to the car, the car to the church, and I ain't out there long enough most of the time for it to matter. But I have been. Oh, I have been. I've been at the bus stop. Cold. So I know. And we have to remember where we've come from. Where we've Man. come from. Man. Who has helped us? Man. Mm -hmm. Who has helped us get where we are? So true, so true. And if you can't reach back and pull the next one, All right. then something needs some prayer time. Man. Because something ain't right. We've all got to help someone. Yeah. Our children are kind of. Inevitable. They're, they're by default in, in a lot of cases. Even when they get older, they're by default. But helping someone that takes you out of your regular routine, even making a phone call, we don't even want to do that. But I'm not talking about y'all. I'm not talking about y'all. I'm not talking about y'all. Woof! Speak it to the walls, okay. <laughs> so, mercy also contains the thought of compassion in view of the sufferer's <coughs> pitiable condition. So, when you see someone in a situation we need to find the compassion and the empathy to extend ourselves to someone else. And to give God credit for what he has done in your life. Mm -hmm. And help that person understand, this is not me, this is God in me. Amen, Walls. Mm -hmm. All right. So, by crying out for mercy, these men were acknowledging that they did not deserve their healing. They weren't claiming it. They were begging for it. We are lepers, but we are pretty good lepers. We think we're worthy of being healed, but that's not what they said. They knew that there was nothing in them worthy to earn the healing or to command it as well. This is the only way that we can come to God for deliverance from the leprosy of our sin. To acknowledge that we deserve God's wrath, but to appeal to his mercy nonetheless. The good news is that God delights to show mercy to those who cry out for it. He is abounding in riches for all who call upon him. For whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Man. Romans 10, 12, and 13. When Moses asked to see God's glory, the Lord passed by in front of him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness and truth, who keeps loving kindness for thousands, who forgives iniquity, transgression, and sin. Yet, he will by no means leave the guilty unpunished, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and on the grandchildren to the third and fourth generation. So in the Cliff Notes version, that means 
your sin that you have not spoken about and and asked for forgiveness for can carry on. Your sin can be attached to your grandchildren, to their children, to their children. And that ain't no lie. And I promise you, God, God does not forget. But he will extend mercy. And he will extend grace. If you ask for it. Yes. And he will save you from the sting of death. If you give him praise. And worship. His holiness demands that he judge sin, but his mercy is the predominant and leading attribute. Whatever you need, call out to the Lord. He is full of mercy. We should all respond as these lepers responded with obedient faith. Well, what, when Jesus helped healed the leper in Luke 5, 13, he first healed him and then instructed him to go to show himself to the priests. Mm -hmm. But here, without any evidence of healing, Jesus commands these ten to go and show themselves to the priests. Yeah. In this, their situation was similar to that of Naaman in Syria when Elisha told, told him to go and bathe in the Jordan River. It was a test of faith for them to go without any evidence of healing. That is a big test of faith. When I ask you to do something for me and you say, all right, go on, I got it. I know me and in my aged self, I may have forgotten before you even get to where it, to the car. <laughs> And it ain't intentional, but I just might have forgot. I, I'm getting older. <laughs> Thank God for God, right? Yes. Thank God that his memory is not our memory. Amen. That's why when people ask me to pray for them, I pray right then. Yeah, right Do not rely on me to remember when I'm laying my head down saying my prayers at night. I pray right then. Because I probably will not remember. But God knows our hearts. Amen? Amen. So, now we are not told whether the ten lepers had a debate about whether or not to go. I can clearly imagine one of them arguing, well, look like, we look like crazy fools if we show up before the priest in our present condition. And another would say, yes, but... We've got nothing to lose. This is our only hope, right? But it hurts to walk on these leprous feet. I know, but if we do what he said, maybe we'll be healed. But this isn't the way he healed the other lepers. Why doesn't he heal us the same way? I don't know, but we must obey. Right? God's not going to do for you what he did for me. He's not going to do for me what he did for you. He's going to do, he's going to provide for you and give you what he has already ordained before the creation. You and your walk and your life is set up for you. Don't compare yourself. Don't be jealous about what the next one has. Your life is tailored for you. Just like the way he made you physically, you are tailored. And some of us have adjusted our tailoring by extra extra donut or two. It'll let out the, the, the sides of, the, of your pants and the dress. But it's still, at the, at the end of the day, the basic components of what you are and who you look like and how you think and how you feel are made up by God. Amen. Your mama's carried you, but God created you. Amen. 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 Thank you. 
So, I don't know if it happened to all of them at the same time, or first one got healed and then another and another, but suddenly by the Lord's power, they were all restored to perfect health. If they had lost fingers and toes, they were magically restored, not magic. It's not magic because it's God, but it's just they were restored. I ain't going to put nothing else in there. All of the devastating effects of the terrible disease were erased. It must have been a marvelous experience to see, for them to look at one another and see that they were being restored mm -hmm. to the health that they had before they ever contracted this disease. So, the only man who returned to God, I mean, to Jesus, to give thanks was saved spiritually. Now the other ones asked for mercy and they came and acknowledged that Jesus was who he was. But the only one who was saved was the one that came back and praised God and worshiped so true, him. So true. Amen. Amen. Now there's Amen. a difference. Is a big difference Amen. from asking God for something uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. than to actually being saved mm -hmm. from eternal death. And it's like I always say, it's hot down there. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go, whatever I got to do to go up in the elevator, not down in the basement. I don't want it. I'm already hot. <laughs> Just because. But I want to please God. I want to do whatever it takes so I can be with him for the rest of time. So the nine, and they were Jews. So it's even, it's a second slap in the face of God. Because it was their God. Amen. And they did not come back to say thank you. So, oh, we asked for God to heal us. Um, or to forgive us in temporary situations. But as we grow and mature, we have to start repenting. And repenting is forgiveness. Leave that thing at his feet and turn and walk away. Some of us have some things going on and we pray, God, help me, help me, help me. God helps you, and then you go back and go back into that situation and end up getting that thing again that you just asked me to deliver from. All right. We must, we must mature. We must mature. Because God is, is expecting us to do some great things, mm -hmm. and we can't do that. When we are supposed to be high school graduates and we're playing around in kindergarten. All right. All right. <coughs> Amen? Amen. So, we, um, in the end, as I've said about 15 times, 10 men prayed and only one prays. God knows that there are far more, unfortunately, that are prone to pray in a time of need, but forget to praise mm -hmm. after that need is met. Mm -hmm. So let's make a commitment and help hold each other accountable to flip this thing around and let them 
majority be the one that prays. Because praising him for all he has done, all that he has done, this church is still standing. Yeah. <laughs> This church is still standing. Most of us in here, we may not be in excellent health, but we are here. Amen. 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 So the majority of us need to remember when he has done something for you, which is every moment of every day. We need to praise him. And then we will make, we will be an influencer of those around us. So we will, we will be thankful after we receive the grace and mercy. Mm -hmm. And we will be mature and we will not have God be a short order cook. <laughs> God, I need a burger and some fries. <laughs> Knowing that you got high blood pressure. Mm. So when your blood pressure go up, oh, please help me, help me, help me. Go to the hospital, they bring it down. Who I'm better, I'm going home. Who? Mm. God fed you, and he fed you what you asked for. Right. And then you made a mess. All right. All right. So let's be mindful that his... his job, for lack of a better word, is not to just give us what we want, mm -hmm. but to supply us with what we need, yes. Yes. and maybe he'll give you some of your wants, but in all things, give back. I got, I got my amen section over here, doing my sermon before I can even get the word that she know what I'm about to say. Yes, sir. But in all things, what you said? Yes, thanks. All right. Yes, thanks. Yes, thanks. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen.